This is a story of how I almost saw a MOA. So I'm filming outside here in Auckland, New Zealand, and it's so funny to me still how in New York City, we are obsessed with dryers. I think a lot of America, we, we wash our clothes and we put them in the dryer. And as you see, I don't think I've, I think I've used a dryer like a handful of times here in New Zealand, but mostly we just hang, hang the laundry out to dry outside. So I thought it was a very real authentic uh, scene for you to see from New Zealand. So when I came to New Zealand, I was, I went to, I think it was the Te Papa Museum in Wellington and saw that there were somewhere around 80 species of uh, wildlife that were unfortunately, that have gone extinct um, from when man first came to New Zealand. And what I love about New Zealand are all the efforts that they make to save the current uh, wildlife populations that they can, the kiwi bird being one of them. And they're making some really great headway. And the moa bird was a six foot tall bird, uh, by all accounts friendly, because uh, apparently they were really easy to pick off because they were very friendly. And so I've, I, you know, I went to Australia years ago and there's the uh, cassowary bird and they apparently will like eat your gizzards or something like that. So they sound very, very, uh, very, very hostile. Whereas the moa bird just seemed like it's really kind, tall bird. So I'm like, oh, I really want to meet one. But of course, they've all gone extinct, which is such a bummer. Now, while I was up in Kirikiri, I made some friends. Uh, my friend James up there took me on a kiwi bird uh, walk. And it was great. We went out about 10 o'clock at night into the Marsden, I guess it was the Marsden Cross Reserve and you could hear the the fields were alive with the cries of the kiwi bird it was beautiful and i just couldn't believe it i guess if if you're trained you see them at half the time he'd be like oh look down at your foot and there was there was this kiwi bird and the first one that i saw was just so it was like being in a different time because the gait of the kiwi bird is sort of I want to say there there might be a little bit of a chicken in it, but but there's something like prehistoric about the way the fur, it's not even fur, it's hard to explain, like the hair of the bird with the, the gait uh, all combined. So I just felt like I was almost in a different era. And they're just lovely. And uh, when they realize they've been spotted, they kind of, it's like they're there one minute, minute and they're not. And they like kind of burrow under what looks like sort of a top layer of hay and one of the girls in the group I was in just walked over and picked the hay up and it was still there which is unfortunately why they're easily hunted by other animals here so you know you do need to uh, not go on these walks with any kind of dog or cat or anything but it was a beautiful amazing time that, that that was one of the highlights of my time here in New Zealand was that kiwi walk and so it still inspired me all the more to see this moa bird that I know is extinct, except, so one day I was with a friend in Christchurch and his friend comes over and we're having a beer and the friend starts talking about, he's like, oh shoot, I gotta go over to the neighbor and see about the moa. And I'm like, oh my God, there's a moa next door. Your neighbor has a moa. And then I realized it was just me not understanding the Kiwi accent as sometimes happens. And he in fact was not talking about a moa. He was talking about the lawn mower. Bummer. So in the end, it looks like I won't get to see that live mower bird after all, but the kiwi bird is a definite, almost substitute, but still very, very cool. So that's it for today's story. If you liked it, hit the like button. And if you are not already a subscriber to my channel, please hit the subscribe button and I will see you on the next video. Bye.